And we are back once again with another Crypto Champs chess lesson here with Vinny Lingham, the CEO of Civic.com. Tell everybody what you do at Civic.com or to the CEO of Civic and what exactly does Civic do in the crypto space? Sure. So uh, thanks. So, so I'm the co-founder and CEO of Civic. We are one of the sort of early crypto companies We're trying to build out um, compliance-based technology and identity technologies for people in the crypto space. I mean, crypto used to be the wild, wild west uh, eight years ago. And uh, right. over time, in order to you know, interface with the existing world and existing you know, banking systems, et cetera, you need to have compliance and to be, you know, so from a legality perspective. So we just make it easy for people to verify their ID and use that on different services. So um, instead of having, every time you sign up for the crypto exchange, you have to hand over all the information and, you know, it's quite a cumbersome process. Uh, we're just trying to make that world easier for everyone. Okay, fast. Is that for the ultimate process of, of people like make money in crypto, so that so that you know you, you're ver they're verified who they are. They can they can deal with banks easier and kind of adding like stability and sort of like a, you know like you said it was the wild west and you're trying to make it feel safer and feel easier for people. Yeah, right. So, uh, I'll, I'll, exactly. Ultimately, we want you to be in control of your own identity and your own information. And so when you sign up at, at an exchange, uh, whether it's a centralized one today or a decentralized one in the future. Your ID verification details can be checked against your device, and they can verify that you are who you say you are and proceed. Right now, it's uh, again, it's a very cumbersome process. Right now, you're uploading more information to the cloud. Hackers can get access to it, etc. We're mm -hmm. trying to make it a lot more safer and secure. Hackers got access to some emails on Chess.com the other day and closed a bunch of people for cheating in Chess. It was hilarious. So, but crypto, it might be a little more at stake than just yeah. like you know closing someone in, on a Chess.com website. All right, that's awesome. Okay, the English. So do you know that this is the English opening? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you questions like that and forgive me if I ever ask you a question that's beneath you. Um, okay, so E3. How are you feeling about the time control? Like it's is it like you said? Obviously, everyone plays longer time controls to build over the board. But... I, I don't mind. I don't mind ten minutes. Five to ten minutes is fine. Bl yeah. Blitz. Blitz requires. Uh, well, bullet. Sorry, bullet requires a lot more sort of working memory, which I, I don't have a lot of right now. So I will kind of generate my calculations on the fly. Right. Um, this is a. If I warmed up, I play more blitz, but I'm not warmed up, so. It's a super weird opening by your opponent here. Can't wait to yeah, see how this game goes. It is very strange. Um, like nothing's developed. Uh, it makes no sense. I'll put that up. Please try and take the center. Why would he do that? I suppose. Hmm. Once by night. I'm actually going to just do that. Okay. I'm going to do this because I, I, I want to like. I want to force something to happen there because he's undeveloped at this point. I like it. I like the thought process. He's, this is weird. Why would he? <laughs> hey, yo, everybody. We're, we got chat up here on both channels. So if you have any questions, that's one of the fun things about these types of lessons, too, is that um, we have uh, chat. So if you, uh, if you have any questions while we're here, go ahead and and ask them um, because we'll probably be able to uh, to get to them during the show. So um, anyway, we'll go. We're going to stay on the on the board here, and uh, but uh, we'll see where this game goes with Vinny. We're just getting started. Welcome in if you're just coming. You guys are both playing pretty fast. I like it. Yeah, it's I mean it's not it's not a very complex position. Yeah, why would he put himself like that's a kind of a weird I would have probably taken with the queen there. 
Uh, agreed. Isolates his C4 pawn. Yeah, it's a, it's just bad move. Um, doesn't seem very good. I'm going to push this pawn. And then try and get my bishop up there. Yeah. People in chat want to know if you're the same guy who was on Shark Tank. I am. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a shark on Shark Tank South Africa. One of the uh, one of the sharks. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, is that still is that still going, or it was a previous previous life? Uh, it's kind of still going, but COVID sort of ended a lot of the stuff, so uh, we haven't yeah. filmed, we haven't filmed another season for a while. Um, yeah. Right. That's pretty. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I've got a funny Shark Tank story. So I don't want to distract you right now because you're focused. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna push this. Yeah, I'm actually kind of hoping he. I'm hoping he attacks me back with the bishop on d4. People want to know how long you've been playing chess. So I can answer. He started when he was young. He was the captain of his chess team. I don't think I was ever the captain of my chess team. So, you know, you've got that over me here. Um, he did what you wanted. I don't want to, so, so, yeah. So, so, so I, I like the fact he's got his knight and his bishop on the, the default. It's kind of like, it's just, I can put pressure there in a second. That was, uh, that was a heads up play, a five head move, as the kids would say. I like that. Yeah. That was nice. Because, like, I don't know. I'm kind of like a go for the jugular type of guy. So I, I want him to. Yeah, he, he, he sacrificed that. That's fine. I actually don't mind that bishop going for the knight. Um, now, if he tries to move this knight back into e4, he won't do that because it's taking out. Okay, it's fine. Uh, my bishop there. Okay, so now I'm going to try and get him to move his knight. And so what I'm going to do is, I don't want to, yeah, I want to put pressure on the knight here. Ah, I missed uh, the queen. Oh, uh, uh, no. Oh, no. I wasn't paying attention. I screwed up. Sorry. Oh, man. That was a dumbass move. I, was so I, I, um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to interject or stop. Plus, I wasn't exactly sure. No, I was like, uh, I wasn't paying attention. I was busy talking. I should be quite quiet. You were, dude, you were playing a fantastic game until that. Yeah, I know. Like, just, my first game in, I don't know how long. Just to be like, I, I totally yeah. missed that move. Yeah. yeah, so you haven't been playing very active. So what what made you want to play in crypto champs? Like, I mean, I love chess. I just have, I've been so busy lately. Um, I was, yeah. It was a blender. Honestly, I think, it, like, I think five minutes is probably better. Ten is a bit too long. Yeah, well, it might be good for you then to practice because you'll have to slow down a little bit in some of the um, some of the mm -hmm. games. Um, I'll, I'll just play this. We'll, we'll we'll play some others too. Um, That's fine. After we'll, we'll take a quick look at this, and uh, I mean, overall, frankly, you were you were playing fantastic, and, and you know, it's really it's, it's, it's a, a blender. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and I hate to say that because as a coach, I mean, like it's my job to, you know. To dive into the details of very very often when yeah. you know in fact i would say 90 percent of the time when someone makes a blunder 
it's more than just that blunder. Like really there was something else in the position they didn't understand and they're just not honest with themselves. But there is the 10% of the time where someone just legit blunders and they were in a great position and you just fell in that 10% of the time right there. No, right? I know. I, was, I, was just yeah. I, I wasn't looking at, I wasn't looking across this. Anyway, um, so, that, so I, I actually prefer, I, I prefer a five minute game actually over 10. I was back 10 because it was a warm up my first game, but like the speed I play at is probably better for five. Um, well, we can we can do that too. Let's bring up the um, let's chat for just a second and bring we'll bring up the article because I want to ask you. You said that the uh, you said that your um, um, your you haven't been play, chase, played chess in a while. So, what made you like? Why did you why did you want to play this? Is it just because we were reaching out to the crypto world and you're like, hey, I'm, I'm you know I play chess and I'm into it or like. What I, your... I have a I have a love for chess. I mean, like if you walk into my my house, I'm on the I have a a wall chessboard. Um, okay. On, on, on my wall, I, I have some chess art as well, and I, I love chess. I just I haven't played a lot of it in the past couple of years. Yeah. It's, a, it's one of those things where it's time consuming, and I actually bought a copy of my system by Nimzovic the other day, and okay. I've been waiting to just like spend you know a couple of probably a couple of weeks or months just going through and working through all the examples and up my game. So I've been wanting to get back into chess. Yeah. Um, I just haven't had the chance. And it's been, it's been like, it's just been a couple of a tough, uh, I guess, couple of years. Um, just work-wise, not really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, chess is time consuming. It's a full-time job sometimes. Yeah, um, it is. When I was in high school, it was a lot easier to spend an afternoon, like, you know, three, four hours going through chess books. No, it's super. I mean, I'm in the same boat. People, I mean, now I run a chess company. So people, I think, assume I play a lot of chess. The truth is, I very rarely play. And when I do, it's like often I'm like, I shouldn't be playing because I'm like playing on my phone after like a glass of wine and I shouldn't be playing. And like, you know, like the point is when you played something at a high level, it's actually really hard to come back to it because it's like, you, if, unless I'm fully focused, all the people I'm going to play are just going to, you know, they're just going to kick my ass. So I don't want to play right until, I, and, and you played, you, you played at a pretty decent level at chess. So it's like, until you're ready to commit, you're probably like, oh man, I don't have time for this, right? Because you yeah. don't just want to. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I have to get, like, if I, if I start playing chess again, I want to get to the next level. So how do I get to, you know, how do I push myself to like a 2000 rating or a, a right. 1900 rating? And that, that, that's like, it's an exponentially more time needed than just to play casually. So Right, 100%. No. Well, all right, we're, we're going to keep on chess today, but I wanted to ask you a question I asked all the others. So like of everyone in the event, is there anybody you're looking forward to playing? We've got like, obviously some random, uh, you know, random players of different genres, if you will, right? You've got like Logic, Bobby uh, is uh, obviously a rapper. You've got Daryl Morey, and then you've got a bunch of a bunch of uh, peeps from the crypto world. Um, I mean, these are some of your peers and people. You know, anybody you want to beat? I want to beat Pump. <laughs> okay, and they probably on just for, just for fun. <laughs> That'll be hilarious if you play him. So I asked that question yesterday to Kane of Warwick, and he said he wanted to beat Robert Leshner. That was his main goal. Okay. So I feel like almost we should just throw all you guys in an arena and let you all just play each other so you can like, you know, beat people you want to beat. Um, but be um, all right, cool. Well, that's funny. Anyway, I uh, let, let's bounce back into the into the game um, yeah. because. Um, let me invite you to the board. I just want to bring up one thing real quick. Um, so I'm about to invite you to um, a new analysis board where we can go over the game you just played. Um, so there you are. Anyway, so yeah, this was a super weird English, whatever this guy was doing. But I wanted to ask, is this like, let's say this person played a normal Queen's Pawn game. Like if they played D4, what would you have played here as black? Uh, I'd still play. I'd still play e6 there because the, the thing with this, what I like about French defense is when someone plays d4 on you, uh, like I love Oops. queens. Que queens is fantastic. Queens gambit is great. I love. I love the queens gambit. But right. when someone, so, plays, so you would you would play d5 here? Just ask. Well, well, well. Hold hold a second. So so I play e6 because when someone plays d4, and you play e6. Often they 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 do a last minute change up and they go hmm. Let me go e4, and they try and take the center with, with two the two center pawns, right? And then I push d5, and I convert it to a queen's gambit decline. I mean, sorry, uh, a, um, a French, a French to French, a French to French, right? So got it. So and what I like is I like people advancing the king pawn on me. So I actually like when they go e5 um, because then this plays into my strategy. So basically, I turn the I turn the game around from queen's gambit 
like someone starting, I think Queen's Gambit is probably the strongest uh, uh, opening for white personally. Like I love it. I think it's super strong. And right. I don't like playing against Queen's Gambit um, in the sense that I'd rather the opponent played uh, you know, forward, a forward king pawn position and yeah. give me a chance to try and capture that forward king pawn, but also allows me to flank on the on the queen side so that I open up uh, with, you know, um, it's like C, I probably go like C5 next. Uh, right. And, and then attack the, the D4 pawn. Yeah, um, typical French. It, it's typical French, exactly. Then at this point, I go knight C6. Uh, and then you know, I try to tempt out the bishop on... Uh, the you know the, the king the king's bishop because then they yep. obviously make the they try to pin the the knight on the king and then you know then it's quite a dynamic game because then you've got a basically a flank side attack it gives me time to get my king into a castle position on king side and um you know this is lots of there's lots of like combinations and play here that i you know, i know that i can you know, it gives me a, it gives me a good opportunity to to try to isolate the king's pawn um uh and then force them to effectively move you know if the f pawn up which opens up right. the king side to attack. So, so okay. it's kind all of right. like so. All right, I just wanted to. I'm, I'm right now. I'm kind of learning, right? So I have, you know. So as we get to know each other, as a, you know, as someone who's going to do some uh, some chess with you, it might be helpful for me to have that context. And so, so if you played e6 and they played c4 here, go ahead and play. What would you play as black? Would you play d5 right away, or would no, you play no, 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 no? I, I would go knight f6. Okay. Because go ahead now, and move black. Now, you can you can move now, the black pieces if you want. Oh, can I uh, move yeah. back in before? So, so I would do that, okay? And and then what I find, maybe in about 20 to 30% of the games that I played in this, they would push the E4 pawn, uh, sorry, they, yeah, they push like uh, the E3 pawn uh, up there. And so they try to create some sort of structure. Like, I like the E pawn moving early on. I actually like to, to tempt it out. And it doesn't always happen, but sometimes people want to tempt it. Or otherwise, they'll pull the bishop down to G G5 um, mm -hmm. as well. Which then I'll, you know, I'll go. Well, I'll the main through. line for white would be this move nice C3. So what we that's you do the main here? line. That, that, that's 70%. Okay. 30% of the time they, they pull some other shit, like they'll, they'll right. put something else down. And so that, that's what I like when they deviate from the main line there and they go, like, even like knight, uh, bishop G5 is great. Cause then I go uh, for white, then I go bishop. Um, I do that. And so what I like about this is it gave me two moves to get the king into. So I'm now one, one step away from castling there. And I don't really okay. care about the bishop. I don't care about the bishop pin. It doesn't matter. So that's my next move is castle. So I get a castle very quickly and then launch a counter assault. And their king still has two undeveloped pieces on the king side for castling. Yeah. And if they play knight c3, what is your main line? Do you play the nimzo? You know, I like retaining this bishop here. I think it's very helpful. Um, so I don't get too aggressive on the king side. I normally just do that. Okay. Um, because again, my goal is to go castle, not cause more hassle. I, I try, I, like, I like to castle early. That's like my style. Did you when just I'm say my goal is to castle, not cause more hassle? Yeah. Did you just, did you just <laughs> drop a freestyle rhyme? Well, well the, the thing, the thing is, if you, if you like, if you do this, okay, then, then it starts getting like, you know, he, he'll go bishop there or something, or he'll try to get, a, a, you know, try to assault me with the. Wait, so bishop before a three like that. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm having to move the bishop again, or I'm having to reconsider what my options are. Like at least when I go, when I go do this, it's kind of safe. What's he going to do? He's going to try and develop his pieces. I get to castle quickly, and I can move on with the game. Right. I don't. The like only the only problem with bishop e seven is if they go for e four. You know, it doesn't really matter much because if I go castle and then he pushes the e four pawn here, I just pull the knight back. I don't, like I know it seems a very defensive position. But I, I don't. If you're, I, don't, I mean, if you're I, comfy with it, you're you're a good enough you're a good enough player that I'm I'm not going to kind of assert you know my my international master chess professional coaching will on you. Whatever you want to do, I I've worked with some lower rated players where I'm giving them a little more concrete advice because they don't have a style or know what they're doing. I will say objectively, like this is worse for you than you would get in a main line. But I don't I don't want to change up an opening if you're comfortable with it. Like if white. If white gets a big space advantage here, like there's no way that a strong player isn't just significantly better here as white. But that's okay. I can always learn. I can always learn. <laughs> well, I, I don't. I um. I, you know, I, I the thing about diving too much into openings is that um. You know, overall, in fact, I just saw someone comment in, in chat about you know what to study and saying he does a bunch of puzzles, but he's getting worse. And obviously, chess can be very compartmentalized. There are people who can solve way too many tactics but they're not 
putting together a whole chess game and, and they're wondering why they lose. Or there's people that focus so much on openings because it makes them feel like they're controlling something, but they're not working on their end games. Or you're reading my system, which is great for your positional chess, right? So I think overall chess has like a lot of complexity to it. And, and there's no way to, there's no way to say that you um, are going to be, you know, losing games, even because of like a worse position out of the opening, especially like, you know, the grandmasters are converting against each other with a small, small advantage. But as long as you have a plan and you're comfortable, it's not, it's not the end of the world. But all, all I would say is if you're going to go for this, you might want to, you know, use the term counter strike in the center. The reason I say D5, Okay, like bishop b4 is the Nimzu and eight. It's actually what I play as black. Obviously, it totally prevents e4 because the knight is is literally yeah. pinned. And if they play a3, you have to know the main lines, which, you know, you're parting ways with the bishop pair and then actually playing c5 instead of d5 so mm -hmm. that you can cripple these pawns and actually and actually try to launch, you know, some sort of attack here. But but again, I think bishop b7 is fine. All I would advise is you might want to stop d5 first. And this is a structure, if I was your coach, I would push you to say, like Vinny, I hear you, but but this is something you should do first because this is not a structure that's going to be unfamiliar for you. It's mm -hmm. it's 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 kind of like a French in that sense. In in the game we just had in English, you eventually were very comfortable expanding on the c5 uh, square, which is great, and you prevent e4 because if you go against one of the stronger players in the tournament with this in d4 and you run into e4, like this is already. This is already uh, objectively headed down a road that you, you know, you're going to be worse out of the opening and, and a stronger player in the event might make it harder for you. Um, yeah. Makes sense. So, so I, I would say that I would say that I, I actually, I, I think you have a, you have a very advanced chess players like mindset and, and it's good that you understand that the Bishop here can be more than useful and effective. You don't have to put it on the most aggressive square, but in this particular move order with the Queens pawn, you really don't want to allow E4 and E5 before um before you basically you know struck back at the center so so again d5 is uh the queen's gambit way to do that the nimzo as i said is another main line um and um if you play d5 and let's say they do this stuff well you can do what you're talking about the line you like bishop here and they go here and you can get castled and very similar to what you would say at some point you're going to strike back at the center probably a line you would like is like a tartic hour where you play b6 and then c5, because you can also be in Keto your bishop on, on um on the uh, sorry, the, the long light square diagonal. Um okay, so th this is great. And honestly, so as far as real quick, real quick getting into the game you just had with c4, really there was like nothing to say. You had a and by the way, you see, you did eventually play d5. So I, I would say that my concrete advice is you should, you know, what you did in this game, snapshot like mental mental take a picture of this this is fantastic and this is really a structure that you should be going for even in a queen's pawn game like this is great only difference is make sure you play d5 a little earlier if you happen to be facing the main line like we were just talking about with the nice three and d4 but in this case you were in a great spot like seriously great great opening um you won a pawn just for nothing you were you were in a, you won the bishop pair and I, I, I almost never say this because it's so against my, my coaching principles. Like if someone makes a blunder, I'm like, yeah, but don't lie to yourself. You blundered. But really, it, the blunder was the climax of several things you were doing wrong. And little mistakes lead to big mistakes, I always say. And self-reflective chess players admit that to themselves. They say, look, I can lie to myself and say, I only lost this game because of move 19. I hung my queen. But I really lost this game because of little things. But you are literally like the one percent here. This is a game where you were just completely winning, and you just flat out blundered your queen. I mean, I, I will say one little mistake to add on, Vinny, and that's not not to change what I said. You were doing great, but I will say that you you did seem to you can, you became obsessed with taking advantage of the knights, right? Which was kind of why you were looking for the whole rook d8 plan. Yeah, right? yeah. is that fair? Yeah. And I think that I think that one of the things you maybe underestimated is that as of move nine you were you were already in conversion mode like you won this pawn for free and in theory yeah. if you're just thinking about simplifying you're already going to be better oh, yeah, no, i got greedy I, I was going to go for the flare that was Exa my exactly so that i'm glad you admitted that so that's the feedback i wanted to give is what you did was great but and, and this plan by the way was very high level like this was an expert level plan you said you yeah. wanted to reach 2000 that was a very good idea because a lot of players here Vinny, would just play queen c6 yeah. and and hope and hope the knight moves or but you already you already understood that that this position 
was gonna was gonna bait him into retreating. Yeah. And then your queen was gonna be in a much better spot exerting pressure, you know, with the bishop. So that was a great idea. But the only mistake is you you became sort of obsessed with that idea. And that that actually did partly cause the blunder because you had like you were like a horse with blinders on. I can see it. You were just focused on like yeah, the win, I, right? I, I was I mean I, I just needed all I needed to do there was go like queen g6 and I would be fine. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Here and but even but also if you're in if you're in like simplification mode when you're winning, just to point out, I could like trade off queens. I could trade off queens. Yeah, exactly. I, even I didn't this see it. is just I, I just missed it. Yeah, just winning. Stupid. So, all right, let's play again. You play a five minute or a ten minute game, and I'm gonna I'll enjoy watching you. We'll, we'll keep talking. Um, I'm still following you, so just so yeah, so just start a new game. Um, whatever you want, let you I'll choose the time control. Game. Cool. Here we go. D four, nice. Shout out to everybody with us. We have Benny Lingham, who's the co-founder and CEO of Civic, uh, civic.com. And uh, they help people get verified and, and get set up to uh, to handle their crypto online. I'm just going to give a simple, you know, simple. I'm like a spokesman for you, buddy. I'm just. Thanks, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, okay, good stuff. Oh, this guy's got a weird opening. He's giving me free development. I don't know why. Yeah, you're, you're doing great. Just, yes, please. Sign me up. Sure. And he's making life hard for himself. Um, I kind of want to just... Yeah, I mean, he's, he's in a... I don't know. This is weird. Okay, I'll just pull back. I mean... I don't know why he didn't put his night out there at least. Get some development going. Sure, why be greedy? By the way, that that just castle, forget the hassle, might have been one of the sickest chess rhymes someone drops casually. You're not even a chess entertainer or a chess streamer. Do you follow any I of the chess like content? I'm glad you like it. I should trademark it. <laughs> uh, is it? Do, do you do you follow any of the chess content? Because some people these days chess is blown up so much. You know, even if they're not playing, some people like have their favorite YouTube people they follow or or, or chess streamers. Like, do you follow any of the? The chess streaming content scene, or you're kind of in your own crypto world. I have to confess, I, I don't. I'm sorry. It's, it's fine. I'm just, you know, asking. I don't. Um, just castle, forget the hassle. Man, this is, yeah, totally this is an interesting bad. position. Let me think. Um, I'm actually going to do this because I, I think my knight's in a pretty crappy position. Given the, this pawn on c6, I'd rather go move it over there. I know it's going to move to the edge, but like, I think I get a lot more. I, I'm, I'm still preventing him from casting, so I'm like, I'm in control here. Yeah. You're a little bit down on time, but but your position's a little better. So this is a good one. Yeah. I'll, I'll actually take this trade. I got the pawn. Um, actually, I'll do that first. Night, I think I'll do night takes first. No, no, that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. Bishop can't really move. In castle. Oh. Hmm. Let's do that.
probably missed the, I probably missed something on the way up, but it's not too bad. I like it. I like what you're doing. Your pieces are oddly, oddly coordinated well. Mm. Which is something computers do well. Well, you should be proud of yourself. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm gonna take the bishop, not the not the knight. Yeah, for sure that was right. Yeah. Good call. Then I'm gonna take the knife for free if I can. Play it safe and get the win. There's some other fancier things I could have done, but probably <laughs> after my last blunder, I'm like, nah, screw it. Take the win. Sometimes the simplest road is the only road you need, I know, right? I you know. 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 Now, with the flare, it's so much fun if you pull it off. <laughs> I think this is the one where I get stuck. I, I feel like I need to move my rook up. But I don't like having my rook on the back rank with this guy here. I'm, I'm hoping he tries to like go to B8. <laughs> yeah, back rank. <laughs> yeah. Like, great. Well, yeah. So the, I need to go there. And here's a little. Yeah, he's not going to pull this off. Is he going to try and do a stalemate? Yeah, he probably will save the game. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I, only, I only saw it afterwards. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Um, okay, let's, let's analyze this one quickly. I'm going to invite you to the board. Yeah. While I'm doing that, so tell – so you were never on – so not not what people would say is I guess American Shark Tank. You're you're a get you're a host on South African Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah. I, so I live I live in San Diego, but I I you know I, I when we film it, I fly down to uh, South Africa to film it. So I, I go there once or once or twice a year. I just invited you to the analysis board. Okay. Uh, sorry. See it. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Uh, which one? There we go. There we go. Cool. Okay. Um, here I'll do it again. Yeah, I mean, I mean, cool. I know, but I think I think I uh, I made a new one. So with the new game, there we go. So this is the one. Um, that one there, cool. Obviously, you were doing great. I think here he swindled you with this move a three. I don't even know if he saw it, but he clearly was trying to open up your king and then kind of got lucky with this perpetual, right? Yeah. Um, I will say this: that you already had the right idea, which is the back rank, and so. You know, you didn't need his rook to move to go for it. I think that for several moves, the most straightforward plan was probably just rook d8, just offer the trade. Yeah. And, and how, you know, what does he do there, right? In fact, in fact, he actually is probably just losing the rook um, because he can't, he can't take it. 
you can't protect it by moving it to the king. That's yeah. that's checkmate. What, so what I think I uh, so, it, wait, wait, so instead of taking his pawn, I should have just pushed it. You're right. Exactly. Just 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 played rook d8, right? Yeah, that's true. So I, that's right. I mean, I think that you're 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 a strong enough player. You've got a lot of thoughts in your head when you're when you're playing these positions. And I think that I think that you know a quick piece of advice I'll say, like in both games, is like you know the simplest path, right? I think that especially when you've got an advantage. If you're not thinking about trading first, then you might be allowing unnecessary complications. Now, again, that's an oversimplification of the last game. I'm aware you were totally better. Just wanted your queen, but I still think you know getting ourselves on a mindset uh, improvement road is the is the biggest goal because we will very rarely ever play the exact same chess games twice. In fact, it just doesn't happen, right? And I think if I was to observe so far, like hearing you talk out loud too, you were, um, you know, I think. Um, by the way, you played a great game here. I, I, you didn't see this, but I'll show you on this move. After Knight takes castles, you uh, you had this guy right here. Oh, I missed uh, that. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I, no, thought, you, I thought I missed something because I knew I missed. I had a feeling I missed something. I think I said that. I think I missed something. But yeah, yeah, no, but you you were you were still totally winning. Um, Rook takes yeah. d seven could have had more consequence. He should have taken the knight with check first. Yeah. Uh, and then saved the rook, and that would have made the game a little bit harder. But either way, you you, you still would have been winning. Um, so that that's the main reason why Knight takes a seven was probably better because of the move that that he you know didn't play. But either way, you were still better winning. And I think that one takeaway, especially in fast time controls, is you know don't over don't overthink it because what ends up happening when we're not when we don't have like the clear mindset path, like I'm on the road to simplification. I you know I'm on the road to trading pieces because I'm better. We allow ourselves to to get distracted. We allow ourselves to get in reaction mode because our opponent's only goal when they're losing is no matter what level of chess, like literally this level to world championship level. If someone's losing, the goal is always guerrilla warfare, right? Yeah. Make it crazy, make it murky, right? Throw a smoke bomb, do something weird. And so if you're forgetting that, it sounds obvious in hindsight, it's true, but in real games, often we forget it, right? That they're just doing it because because by definition, think of this, if someone hasn't resigned yet, then they still believe they have a chance by definition. It doesn't matter what they're down. And so if they're doing moves like this and you're kind of just, you know, it's one of those moments where it's easy when you have a little bird on your shoulder and someone like me telling you after the game, but, but remember it because you're, you're a strong player, Vinny. I actually think you could win this event now that I'm seeing you play. I think that, <laughs> but I think where you, where you could go wrong is like, you're a little rusty. So you need to practice over the next couple of weeks. Right. And, yeah. and some of these practical things that you know, when you're an active player, it's like, Mikhail Tao wrote about this in his, in his match with, um, with Mikhail Bodvinik in 1960. Great book, by the way. One of my favorite chess books because it's kind of an autobiography of a match, it, of just one match. If you haven't read Tao Bodvinik 1960, I recommend it for all chat, all everyone. Um, one of the things he says in that book is even though he thought, he didn't know if he was a, str a stronger player than Bodvinik when he won the world championship in 1960, but he said he knew in game two he was going to win the match. And it was because of this critical moment where Botvinnik took like 45 minutes on a move that he should have played like instantly. And his point was like, in no world are you ever seeing the positions much deeper than, than you need to with that amount of time. And it's just purely something people do when they haven't played enough chess, even at the highest levels, because Botvinnik was world champion. So he was a little bit sitting on his laurels while, while Mikhail Tal had to make his way through the entire candidates to play him, right? And, and he knew that basically Bodvinnik was not going to be at his best in like time pressure and in critical moments. Cause that's just like, it's like just an air someone only makes when they're out of shape, period. And yeah. one of the things you can make the mistake of is getting nervous or just forgetting like, Hey, it doesn't matter if you're playing the cleanest road to win. Like I said, just as long as it's simple and don't lose sight of the obvious things to do when you know, you're just winning, because what happens is you get in reaction mode, like A3 is just, all it is is guerrilla warfare. And you're forgetting yeah. that if you're reacting to it, right? Your plan uh, is just on first that when you're ready. That was dumb. I should, I should just ignore so, that. Yeah. Anyway, you get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be overly critical to it. No, 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 you're bad. right. You're right. You're right. Uh, I should just go on to simplify, simplify, simplify. Yeah, get yeah. Down to the, uh, so I would want that for the pawn. I don't even want to give any other opening thoughts because you, you played fine. Um, by the way, you played the exchange slob. Is this something you would normally do or you just did it because... You know, you want, by the way, it worked out because he played this really dumb queen takes d5. But I, I, um, I like exchange because I like opening up the, the c file. Okay. Okay, cool. And if you know this line, by the way, this is actually a, a low key, very dangerous line, even at high level. If you know the lines that go with bishop f4 and not anywhere else, and very quick versions of rook c1, 
There are a lot of positions that can get very, very dangerous for black, even at uh, Grandmaster level. Yes, that's why, that's why I like. I, so just, just give you some background. I spent majority of my sort of high school career studying okay. French and Queens and flanking attacks and that sort of thing. And um, like, I mean, I obviously spent a lot of time looking at Sicilian and all the different, uh, you know, English as well and all the different like, you know, mainline openings at the time. Uh, this is like mid nineties. Um, okay. And I settled, on, I settled on Queens. I basically try to master Queens and French as my two openings. And okay. instead, of trying, instead of trying to learning all the different lines from every opening with the limited amount of time I had at school, I just focus on like, you know, how do I get really good at... So I, I know I, I know a lot of the traps in Queens as well. Um, so if someone opened, if someone played silly against the Queens, I'd, I'd, I'd wipe them with some traps. Um, okay, I love it. Yeah, you know, like if people try and hold on to the pawn in the gambit, like that's just stupid. It's a losing proposition, and so yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I, I I still have all those memorized to a large degree. Okay, that's awesome. Um, one second, just telling something to my team here. Um, okay, cool. Let's do another one. Play again. I mean, this is going great. I love it. You you play a game. You get some immediate advice. Specific sometimes that's specific great. X's and O's. Other times, um, on a uh, you know. So I might make you play one more 10 minute before we're done. As your adopted chess coach here, I want you to play the time control we're going to have in the tournament so you get a little bit used to that pace because, because even though it's slower, it might be good for you to force yourself to slow down in some critical moments so you can, so you can you know, sometimes we, it's hard when we have time available and we're not used to using it, but, you know, we could be playing maybe even deeper chess if we, if we slow down a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do a 10 after this is great. Um... I know that the, I don't think that that's a standard line. Pushing the bishop up there is, is that a standard line? A uh, bishop of four is is probably not the the right placement for the bishop in this line. L let's look at that afterwards because I don't want to. It's a short yeah. game. I don't want to distract you with yeah, feedback no, no. now. As I was saying, like I know it's not, um, but I, I don't know for some reason I always I always like playing it. Uh, it, it, and that's fine. We, you can, but but I'll give you the specific advice that'll help you know when it when it works and kind of when it doesn't. And I think in that particular line with d six and e five is just not where you want the bishop there. Okay. Okay. Because I, I always like to taunt the opponent's pawns coming out, like the e five pawn. Yep. And so that's what I used it for. It, it worked to some extent. Um,
This is good stuff. A little bit of a weird hybrid Philidor meets Sicilian kind of position. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very interesting position. Um, the kids would say it's awkward AF, which means as friendly. <laughs> I don't really want to trade bitches, but I don't think I have a choice. I like the fact that he's, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to trade. I'm going to use queen off there. basically prevented from castling. I really hope he takes the pawn on h4. <laughs> Please take it. I actually don't know the answer to that either. Cheese and cream. Sorry, uh, answer to remember question. I think I think multiple cryptos are actually going to be a part of the prize money, and the event is for charity. So if Vinny wins, he'll be donating uh, crypto to um, to the charity of his choice. There's a whole prize fund listed. Um, maybe we can bring up the prize fund while Vinny's playing real quick. Let's just flash that. Um, so there you go. It's. Uh, Two brackets, just like pod champs, um, a championship and a consolation bracket. And either way, there is uh, prize money up for charity. Um, it might actually be a cash prize. Vic, maybe you could ask Austin that real quick. I don't think Austin is watching the show. Uh, Coinbase is the sponsor, and they are awesome. And they're actually putting up the entire uh, prize fund for charity. I They might even just be doing it in cash. Um, to answer your question. So, all right, back to the game. Vinny, Vinny's in a tough spot here. 30 seconds coaching Vinny. We need to speed up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I gotta speed up faster. I'm going to stop. But let's bring the game back up. The chat just keeps talking about me making dad jokes. Apparently, I have a I have a reputation for making dad jokes, Vinny. Just FYI. Are you a dad? Um, All right. Well, right now we need you to. Uh, we need you to. Got Twenty eight seconds left to figure. Well, yeah, we're gonna let you focus. No, no dad jokes right now.
I'm done. Cool. Okay, that was that was terrible. That, that was a good, interesting game. Obviously, the time pressure is what is what caught up, and probably yeah. my my dad jokes as well. You've got a freedom shirt on. Uh, by the way, you want to talk about the freedom shirt? Freedom for crypto. I. Uh, it's freedom, like I don't know. I just I think people need to have more freedoms in life. That's all. I agree. Crypto is one of those freedoms you have. Agreed. Agreed. Um, people were commenting on my on my my kids play outside shirt. Yeah. The uh, uh, shout out to Elijah's grandma, ninety five. There you go, Elijah. All right. Let's look at let's look at the game. Um, this is um. I'm gonna invite you to the analysis board if you want to come back over. Okay. Um. Cool. So, um, yeah, you got a good position in the middle game there, despite the awkwardness of, of Bishop F4. Yeah. And, um, and, okay, so real quick adv advice on that. You asked the question. So in general, everything here, perfect, right? Yeah. And remember, you're, you're kind of playing these moves, whether they're going for like this sort of old Indian, King's Indian setup, which is what this is actually with, with yeah. Knight. Knight d7, this is called the old Indian. If they had played g6, it's it's officially the king's Indian. Uh, but you're doing this even if they're playing like, you know, the queen's gambit, really, right? Like if you're playing d4, they play d5, you're going here. And, you know, even if you play a, a Slav capture, you're basically playing the same development. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of those lines, especially the bishop comes to f4 in, in, a great, in a great spot. In a lot of d5 lines, even if it's not a semi-Slav. But... Specifically against the Indian setups, the bishop doesn't do well on f4. And that actually applies to both the king's Indian and, and the old Indian. Um, obviously, you, um, as I said, you know, in the beginning of the lesson, right? You're strong at a player and your games here are not being decided by the opening. But that doesn't mean we don't want to make incremental improvements. And what I would say is that the same advice I gave... Uh, why you why maybe you don't want to play bishop e7 as black before you prevented expansion would be what i would say here there's no reason you shouldn't just take the center in this position um and and the thing is like if they play e5 now you might get the same type of idea you did in the game yeah. where like you develop and maybe even castle queen side but without the loss of time with the bishop going out and retreating and also you can do the same type of attack in a position where you where you frankly have a little bit better chance of it succeeding because you have more space and the position is closed. Whenever you're launching a wing attack, it typically has better chances when the position is not open. In an open center, it's much harder for your pieces to focus their resources on one side of the board just because of the tactics that happen on, on the open file. So I would say like, why, um, you, and, and of course you could also play bishop g5 if you really want to develop the bishop, but I would say, um, do you have hesitation about playing e4? Is it just that you're kind of used no, to Bishop? I, I've before? played it before. I've played it before. I, I just felt like with this, with the old Indian sort of attack, which I haven't, it's been a while since I played this position. Yeah. The, the, like the, 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 I was trying to get him, I was trying to get the e, him to push the e pawn out because I don't like, I don't like a long, I mean, you know, as you know, the, the you know, the, the longer, King side pawn has an advantage in the end, right? It's the end game. So if he's in the castle king side, he's got four pawns. If, he, if, if that chain was unbroken, uh, it's a slight right. advantage. I, I always try and just kill that advantage early on if I can by getting people to sort of move the e pawn two up. Um, and yeah, and that that sounds like a very a very Nimzovitz thing to say. I can tell you've been you've been reading my. That's like a that's like a very long term pawn structure idea, which I like. Yeah, that's good stuff. I just um, don't like having I don't like having to go up against a four pawn structure on the king side. I I, I prefer going up against a three pawn. And and by by four pawn versus three pawn, like if you play e four, what are you expecting them to play here? Um. You know, depends on how defensive he is, right? So you could also go with a, you can go with a b6 and fiancé to the, the bishop there. You could do the same on the king side as well. Uh -huh. And you could maintain his position without getting too... He seemed like a very passive player. Those two... Those yeah, two the old Indian are, the old Indian is, is obviously a, a slightly... It's, it is a passive idea, but it has the whole point of trying to, at some point, sort of shoot in the center. And yeah. the, the, only, the only thing is that if you... After, after the captures and bishop back to d2... Yeah. Um, he, he plays c6, which is fine. If, if he decided to play more aggressively, you know, developing the bishop and getting castled 
Um, there might even be some tactics on the king side if you're not careful. What you, I mean, you've essentially handed the the tempi of the opening over to Black, and that Black actually now has three pieces developed versus your two. No, and so right. it's just no, you're a, right. You're right. The, the, um, that's a good point. And, and so one and one of the big you know just concepts of like space is like sp space and chess right so if we start with the with the base definition is is literally like the squares available to your pieces behind your furthest advanced pawns so that's yeah. the definition when we say space the squares yeah. available to both sides so typically if you have a space advantage which is which is actually kind of strong here for for you mm -hmm. um the one way a space advantage backfires is if pieces get traded because what space becomes as the pieces disappear is they become holes. Space yeah. becomes an outpost square for someone to put their knight on or space becomes a weak color complex for a bishop to dominate on the dark squares or, or, or space becomes some other way that the pawns get sort of undermined from behind. But in, a, in, in the way we think of space at a high level in chess is the same we think of the bishop pair. The earlier you get a space advantage or the bishop pair advantage, the more dominant it has the potential to become because it's if you still have all your pieces on the board and you're given a space advantage, what's gonna what ends up happening is your squares get better pieces. Uh, sorry, your pieces get better squares, and pieces getting better squares leads to more options, and more options in the middle game is better tactics. So, like if I'm playing white and I have a space advantage early on, I'm I'm looking to to be you know kind of like in fact I probably. I would probably even, you know, do the idea we talked about. I, I would actually, I really like the way you played the middle game, by the way. I would be playing like this and queen d2 and just, and going to like crush them with my space. And I'm not worried about an attack in the, this position yeah. because the center is so close. Very difficult for them to get all these pieces to develop as quickly as my, as my current space advantage gives me. And, and I, and I would use that to my advantage. So I, I would say this. Again, like we get it, we got to some other tactics, but think about space a little bit like that. That it's kind of like the earlier you get it, the more interest we're going to earn. And the thing is, it should change your entire plan. Like if you get a big space advantage in the beginning, you like you take that space and and you just you build strength on the position and you get aggressive uh, with with your opportunities. And and so Bishop F4 is um, a move that in a lot of systems is going to be more than perfect. Any D5 Queen's pawn structure. That's how I answer it. Any queen's pawn game where the pawn is on d5 rather than d6, the bishop is fantastic here. And, and the only time it has the risk of backfire is in the Indian systems, whether they be old or king's Indian system. So, all right, we'll leave it at that and, and move on. The middle game was interesting. I like d4. Queen c2 was a great move by you, by the way. Uh, f3, he, he kind of gave it. He kind of invited you to this great plan because Bishop G4 is such an yeah, awesome move. That was like play. three moves. <laughs> yeah, it's like he gave he gave you this plan and you took it, which was great. Um, Castles Long was a fantastic move, and so after H4 H6, this was the only position I wanted to pause in because G5 is a super strong move and exactly what you want to play, but you don't you don't want your attack to come to a halt by the fact that you had to take with a piece instead of with the pawn because the pawn was pinned. If I was, if I was playing white here, I would have used that strength while I still have it to kind of build up on a little bit. Like example, well, you, like you, you would have advanced the H pawn instead? Uh, or, or even unpin the pawn first, like, like Bishop H3 first. By the okay. way, he might, he might have wondered maybe and allow some sort of discover check. It's, it's possible. Um, or, or even like, I might play like 92 and knight G3 first and, and get my pieces behind the pawn because in this position, you control all the cards. And I'm actually not sure yet whether whether what you said is true. Will we want to play h5? Like another example is like you might want to play h5 and knight f5 and and and, and go for something like with an open g5. I don't know. I mean, you've got uh, you've got so many options, and and g5 just might have been a little bit rushed because I wish you were able to take with the pawn and keep the tempo party rolling. When you had to take with the bishop, it felt like your attack slowed down just a bit. Um Okay, but still. I was, I was running out of time, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah, you were already running out of time. You, you're still in a good spot. And I think the time is what got you nervous to, to sort of advance with a move like B4. Um, okay, I'll go into 10 minute game. How's that? You should go. Yeah, yeah, you ready You ready to play one more? Yeah, I'll do 10 minutes. Let's go. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, and, um, oh, wait, you already started. Here we go. Let's do it. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. So anyway, I think um, I think yeah, the time did catch up with you a little bit there, and this is your first. Have we had a black? Oh no, we had a black game 
at the start of the lesson when the guy played that weird English. Yeah, it says your game will abort in 35 seconds. The guy's not playing. Also, yeah, the guy, the guy has disappeared. Classic. Yeah. Classic a, user I'll, running I'll, from I'll, the fight. And rematch. Right, Thank you for well where rebels are with the raid. Appreciate that. Welcome everybody. Uh, we are we're doing chess lessons, preparing for crypto champs, Vinny Lingham. Oh man, I keep wanting to make you share your Shark King story, and I keep forgetting. I want to know more about that. Um, Plus, don't you want to know my Shark Tank story? I'd love to hear your Shark Tank story. I think the chat wants to know my Shark Tank story. It's actually really a funny one. Um, what's up, Gasparov wannabe? Um, thank you for being here, man. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Okay, now we're in an interesting little London system. FYI, this opening is going to be played against you in the in the, in the the tournament. A lot of people play oh, this. Oh, I'm opening. sure. I'm sure. Well, this is a... Yeah. A very common defense. Yeah. Well, defense against my kind of defense. Counter yep. defense. <laughs> so I actually like pushing that. Okay. This will be uh this will be interesting. We'll see, we'll see what plan white chooses here. It, it, you know, if he if he had brought his bishop out earlier, it would have been better, but like he it was late. So I, I like I like to squeeze him out there and go down the flank side. There's there's one plan that white um should sometimes go for here, but um, we'll see. We'll see if, if they don't. You're right. You're going to get a really nice space advantage. I love your pawn chain, and here you go with b4. This is going to be a very good attack. I'll show you what what to be uh, aware of as far as White's potential counter to c4, but we'll do that after the game. do that it's a very porn heavy opening so I can create a, I can get an inside pass pawn there, which might be quite valuable. And I could probably reclaim this pawn, this, this, this A3 pawn for my bishop. Funny story. I wanted to push the pawn a bit more. So you know, you know the elephant's gambit? Um, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, the reason I say that is that I was I was trying to make I was I, I like what I like about it is the way you turn a bishop into a pawn temporarily actually. Mm -hmm. um,
I think I think it almost there. It's amazing how much slower ten minute fields after playing five minute, right? Yep. Yeah, anybody watching on Twitch, we can we'll throw you a link to follow this particular game. And but yeah, if you log on to just.com, you can just type slash follow username um, into the into the, the console of live chess or play. Love from Toronto. There's a lot of good players in this event. They're impressed with your chest, Vinny. I know you're not happy with your chest right now. Yeah, they're I'm not impressed. happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Daryl Morey, someone who a lot of people don't know, but this is this is an interesting event because unlike some of the other events we've done for celebrities of non-chess, uh, of the non-chess world, like pod champs, um, sometimes people don't know how how the strong players would be, but I feel like everybody in the crypto event is... Uh, just a slightly higher level of chess than, than the pod champs participants. It makes sense. It's, it's got a bias towards people who have mathematical things. Yeah. But a lot of people are like, you know, they they played chess like you have a similar story. I mean, Kane talked about how his brother was really good when they were younger. Uh, yesterday, Kane Warwick. Okay. Does everybody in the crypto industry just have each other on speed dial? Not quite. I'm just kidding. People might say that about chess too. Not quite. That was kind of nice that he did that. Sorry? Uh, that could get tricky here. Yeah, no, I, I kind of prefer my position here. I, I do too. I was saying it's nice that he did that. Yeah, that was, it's kind of a gimme there because like it could have really caused more damage. Like I still got his rook back there pinned up. Um, yeah, uh, but he got that. I think he needed to bring your queen to f6 on the last rook. Instead of king g8. Yeah, I'm screwed. Hmm. Not much I can do here, right? Okay, it's good. I can find it. I get lucky with you play what you play well. At this point, it's about getting lucky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not much chess involved here. Yeah, so I'll tell you the Shark Tank story. So, um, yeah, back, back in a couple of years ago, they did Dragon's Den South Africa. You probably know Dragon's Den. Um, and, um, you know, when they, when, they, when they switched over to Shark Tank, um, I, uh, they asked me to be on, on the show. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll do Shark Tank as well. That's, that's kind of background. And because I'm obviously born and raised in South Africa, kind of, uh, people and yeah. That's kind of cool. A, a brainer. Sorry? Uh, that's cool. Um, yeah, that's cool. And uh, what's, the, what's the coolest idea or what's the craziest idea you were ever pitched on Shark Tank? Crazy idea is that I was trying to do like a sub, submarine tour business. Submarine tour business? Yeah. Okay. That's actually kind of a cool idea. I like that. <laughs> yeah, but the economics are terrible. <laughs> yeah, okay. That would make sense. That's why someone like me would think of it, is it's yeah, a cool it idea. Like, kind of nuts. They're like using these old submarines to keep it on the coast. Like, ah, yeah. Probably not going to happen much. 
Um, that's wild. Yeah. Is there an idea that you guys funded that um, that went on to be something famous that people would know? Mm. No, I mean, in South Africa, people know some of the business. We funded a company called Bloomable, which is an online florist. Uh, okay. Yeah, it does pretty well, actually. Okay. Like the largest over there. Let's see if I can pull something out of the hat here. <laughs> Not holding my breath. You're doing great, by the way. Given that it's been a it's been a tough position for a while, you're hanging in there. Yeah, it's been. <laughs> it's definitely. Not well, now it's it's kind of unclear. You have some outside chances, and he's and he's getting under time pressure. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of think trading the pawn and the rook for the rook gives me some fighting chance. Well, the issue is is how much material you might lose if you take on a three, right? Because you also lose the bishop. No, I know, I know. It's a, it's like <sighs> let's go back here. nice uh, now we have a game on i think i can pull this off uh check take take thing okay it's no i'm not i'm one tempo short yeah
that's what I'm saying. Cool. Anyway. Oh <laughs> man, that was close, dude. Um, I'm you, warming, uh, up, I'm warming up. I'm warming up. I'm warming you're warming up, up, right? And that's kind of the goal of of the next couple of weeks, right? Obviously, it's just like. You know, I do think that the 10 minute time control is good to practice, even though it's hard, just because one, mm. you want to have more experience in the game pace that you're going to actually have, right? Especially if you're playing stronger players, there are several other players that are about somewhere between 16 and 1800 strength, right? So there's, you know, I think you're, I think you're probably in the top five of, of players with the, of the 16 players, but, you know, so I think the more practical experience you have at that pace, it's really going to pay off. Um, and, um, you know, I think if we, if we analyze this one real quick, um, I think this will, this will probably have to be the last one we analyze, by the way, if that's all right, I got to, I'm good. Thanks. Appreciate the time. Um, let me, let me invite you to the board real quick. Um, oops, sorry. Just type the command. Um, the, uh, sorry, let's go back to the beginning. Um, yeah, I think, I think that the, uh, the only real place the game got away with you is at some point, the queen side probably had too much, especially once you have a big space advantage, yeah, eventually. Overextended. Over over yeah. Well, not, not even overextended. Actually, I mean, the space you ended up getting was nice, but it was just that probably like right here already, or, or especially after a four, like you really need to emphasize the, the, the King side as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And, and the problem is like every move from here on out came with a tempo. So you really didn't have time. Like, you know, he takes, you have to take back. Um, although here, here was the one moment I want to show you that taking with the knight might've actually been very good because you hit the Bishop and the pawn. Okay. Um, that was maybe just like yeah. I, I wasn't I wasn't so excited about having an isolated F pawn. That's why I was like yeah. yeah. The, the C pawn. No, you're right. And, and what I mean, you C did pawn, is what you did is 100 percent the best move on a structural level. This was just a very specific blunder that he made, and that's probably why you both missed it because yeah. it's not you don't really expect someone to take with the knight and give up the pawn. But actually, I think you win this pawn, and after they move, you win this, and this yeah. is actually very good for you because. This pawn is probably can't be taken. You've got knight a5 coming. Like, so just, I mean, if he moves the rook, you actually, you, you might actually win another piece. So anyway, no big deal. I think that's just a good, if you're going to get this structure again in the future, you said you like playing it. I would just say, watch out for that idea because if someone has a vulnerable bishop on f4, you probably don't want to miss that, that chance. That, that said, so regardless of missing that, what you did was right, but every move came with a temple from him, so it was really hard. Like now, you now he takes again, and and right here, this was your last chance to like emphasize getting castled before it's too late. Um, basically, um, probably just playing bishop e seven or or bishop e six is is what you want to do here. You know, just get get developed, get castled as soon as you can, um, and. Um, and and yeah, even even bishop e6 as well. Any move that, that blocks the e file, because that's where the trouble came in. This 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 is probably well, the only that, that's where I was contemplating it. Remember, I said the elephant's gambit, like yeah, the yeah. bishop on e6 is the elephant's gambit position. That's why I was like, it looks yeah. very elephant's gambit-ish. And I was right. like, nah, let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, but I think um I think I, the main I should have done, is... done it. I was tempted. I was yeah, I or, or, or again, or or just bishop e7. Right, just bishop yeah. e seven and get castled, and your space advantage is is a very good one. And um, his a three pawn is weak, like you said. And and uh, so the the main thing is that if you're going to spend so much time expanding a space advantage on the queen side, every every action and equal and opposite, you know, cause and effect. Right, you, you're definitely neglecting the king side in order to accomplish what you are on the queen side, and that caught up with you a little bit, right? So um, this was sort of your last chance. Play bishop e7 or bishop e6. Moving another piece that's already developed as, um, you know, ended up getting in trouble as soon as no, you bought the book That was, that was, yeah, you're, you're right. Um, and, and again, probably even here, like we joke about the elephant gamut, but don't think, of, here, here's some advice I would say is that uh, <laughs> someone says, tell him the elephant gambit should be what he's playing. I will say this. Don't think so much about the, um, the activity of the particular piece. Think about it more in terms of, you know, their purpose and the overall structure. 
And I think that the big difference is you were afraid to put the bishop there, but it's not like you're putting the bishop there and it won't be down the road that maybe he gets to go here, right? Maybe no, he gets to go here. That, the reason that I did that is like I was, I actually wanted to have the bishop for um, uh, I, I, like a b7 move, um, particular. I, I didn't want the bishop pinned down, that's the reason because I felt that I, I had the. Yeah, I guess it was just stupid. I should. I probably should just. I should probably should have the bishop up. I was thinking about it. Yeah, and but but what I'm saying is, it's only pinned down temporarily. That's my yeah. point, right? It, yeah, it yeah. serves a greater purpose in the position, which is to close the e file and, and prevent some of the bad things that happen. Protect the d5 pawn because because of what happened here. So I think that um, that helps us make those decisions because you're going to be right in the future, Vinny, and you won't. I won't be there. It'll be like you got to wait, like activity of the piece versus a decision like this in terms of something that is maybe needed for the overall structure. And so the advice I would say in those positions is if you're not putting yourself in a permanently bad spot, yes, it's temporarily passive, but the bishop has a future and it's serving a purpose within the, the current position, which is to kind of hold the whole structure together. So when the bishop isn't there, it, it actually gets, gets you in trouble because of d5, right? And then, and then everything got kind of funny because then you got kind of lucky he went for this. Like, that was definitely not good. He should have just taken another pawn oh, yeah. and just, you know. Fatal. But, um, but unfortunately, he did so and then, and then um, got this tactic here. But if you had played queen f6 instead, mm -hmm. now this check is, is just, you know, fine. You just you back up the king and, and you, uh -huh. you know, you've got, you've got two bishops. You could even play bishop c6 next, like. So if you had played queen f6, this endgame is also very good for you. The two bishops are just are so good in positions like this. Um, so he kind of got lucky right after that and, and picked up your bishop. But what's funny is at this one, I think we both kind of felt like, all right, it was, it was not a good game. But then, then you actually played really well, and the game got super weird and tricky. Um, I was almost kind of hoping you were going to play this move here, hoping that he'd take your bishop. So oh. um, but no, but you, you, what you did was probably the best. Yeah. And, um, you know, the biggest mistake he probably made was was not simplifying faster. He got really fancy with his rooks and pawns. I mean, if, yeah. if I'm playing this position as white, like, I, I mean, why even play, I mean, just like rook b1. I mean, like, I don't even know how you avoid letting me in. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he got a little bit too fancy for his own good. And but then you took advantage of it. and The game got very tricky, which was awesome. A little fun in the end. <laughs> yeah, and um, and almost completed the comeback. This was good. And uh, you played c3. You know, I guess in hindsight, if you played bishop d5 first to stop rook f7, that's a hard move to play when when you've got this pawn that's just begging to be pushed. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, he, he found this idea at the last second. And for for the record, if you had played bishop d5 now and he takes it. I don't. I don't think he actually has any any mates here. He is. He is probably still winning if he finds this move. Um, and and obviously it's very hard for your king. But but maybe that was maybe that was one last chance. But all right, good stuff. I mean, overall this was a very good game and a good start. I mean, hopefully some of the tips and and things we looked at in regards to the mindset. But I think overall, like you just gotta you just need to play. You know, as much as obviously, you know, we know you're a busy guy. Crypto champs is coming. I think the more you play, and you know, maybe we can have another lesson. We can stay in touch if you have any questions. But I think overall, the more you play, you're going to get back in game shape. You know, where the, where you've been, and I think you'll be feeling pretty confident. I'm, I'll be playing. I'll play a lot before the week before. I'll get back in shape somewhat. Yeah. Thanks. All right, man. Well, I don't know. Do you have any other questions? Oh, my Shark Tank story. You want to hear that? Oh yeah, I want to hear. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Funny, funny story, and a lot of people don't know this. Uh, a lot of people even within our company don't know this, is, um, God, so long, about seven or eight years ago, at one point, Eric, my, my partner and our, our CEO, um, and I decided that uh, we were going we to go uh, and pitch to Shark Tank for our scholastic site, chesskid.com. And chesskid.com is, is, is alive and, and doing super well and is 100% owned and operated by, by chess.com and, and does really good for kids and, you know, literally tens of thousands of schools, but it was in its infancy. And, and while we were, you know, the, the cap table at chess.com in regards to the shareholders and whatever, that's been kind of frozen for a while, but we were thinking, you know, maybe we would spin out chess kid if, if, if the sharks were interested in growing chess as a business in the schools. And we actually made it to like the last round before you're on TV. 
and That's not a surprise, great. right? I mean, it's a great bit. I mean, Chess yeah. Kid is literally chess itself is 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 amazing, right? The market is massive, and Chess Kid is literally the scholastic extension and that you know there's no social networking totally safe for kids it deals with like enterprise level pricing so that schools can can grow at mass scale and so it's very affordable like we just want chess to grow for kids and and i i they never told us exactly why they pulled the plug but like literally we we did the pitch which was hilarious we like hopped in a car at the last second and went to like palm springs california and did it in one of those massive hotels where like everybody's there with like like we were in line at Shark Tank, hilarious, right? That's great. And then, um, and then we made it to like the next round of like a video interview, and then we made it to like pass the next round to like a regional like final selection of like people that are gonna like go and film. Like they were working out logistics with us, and then they pulled the plug right then, and they never tell you why. They just pulled the plug. Um, and if I had to guess, it was because they started to learn a little more about the Chess Kid like current situation, which is that it was 100% already owned by Chess.com. And wow. they asked us, they asked us directly if part of what we were doing is actually allowing Chess.com to be invested in. And we said, no. We said the only option is to spin out Chess Kid as like a new JV if the Sharks are interested in funding and starting starting a, basically a brand new entity. And I think once they learned that chess.com was not on the table, we were not interested in investment in chess.com because we're completely privately owned. And, and obviously we're just a bunch of guys who love chess and that's what we do. But um, I think once they learned that, I think they pulled the plug. I think that's what happened. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. They don't want to do yeah. stuff to type stuff. Like, so like kind, of, seen, kind of a funny I've story. Seen, so, I've seen those sorts of deals. I'm like, eh, I'm not really interested either. Yeah. Um, the other funny story is I invested in a company called Chess Cube many, many years ago. Oh my God, I remember Chess Cube. Yeah, yeah, with uh, Joel Perez. That was his company, right? Uh, no, no, it was Mark Levitt. He, okay. He Mark Levitt. He's, he's, he's an IM as well. Um, okay. And uh, he, he's South Africa and it, like it lasted like 14 years, whatever it is, but the, it was based in South Africa. Really cool stuff back in the days, web-based chess, etc. Yeah, it's yeah. A no, I, I remember Chess Cube well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, it was a cool interface. I used to play on that a lot, actually, back in the days. But yeah. um, you guys, you guys won, and uh, you won the space, and that's great. It's great to see uh, chess. Well, I, I guess so. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of chess sites now, and the truth is, the game itself is just like growing like crazy. I mean, the Sparrow yeah. Chess just launched, and you've got, you know, obviously you've got Lee Chess, the open source, you know, platform. You've got Magnus's group, and I think that overall, like, it's just you know everyone's doing well, and chess is doing well. I don't know that we. That we won. I don't like. I don't like to think about it like that. I mean, the truth is, like, it's not a game that anyone owns, right? We don't own the IP. Nobody does, which makes it like a stewardship in a way. Because, like, well, when I when I say you guys have won, like, I've looked at the other platforms. I think you guys are the most sophisticated platform out there for chess. It's like the, okay, well, I appreciate that from my from my just like looking and playing. And I I, I kind of play in elite chess, but it's nice. I mean, everything's good. But you guys have been around the longest, and the mobile stuff is good. The puzzles, the coaching, it's all it's pretty good. So cool, man. Well. Of, <laughs> in, that con in that context i do appreciate that we won i like that thank you uh, um all right man well this has been awesome hey good luck let's stay in touch if we need to get together again if you want to do some stuff you know obviously you've got plenty of plenty of uh people to play on chess.com so anyway man uh have a have a good afternoon in, in san diego and uh and i guess we'll i guess we'll talk later thanks Danny. that was great i really enjoyed it thanks everyone for watching all right man bye everybody yes.